This question is actually based off of one of our students in a previous PLC training class. He wanted to know how to communicate to a Modbus server using a Compact Logics or Control Logics PLC. And I said, well, you need some third party software. Let me see what I can pull together. And then I was surprised to find that Rockwell Automation had an add on instruction to turn this into a Modbus client or a Modbus server. So that was a really exciting find. In our previous video, we configured our Micro 820 PLC as a Modbus server. Now I get the Modbus server and client names confused a lot, and this is hardly a networking class or probably the proper way to do it. But the way I think about it, if you know the numbers you need, so for example, in that previous video, we configured these Modbus mapping. So we now know these numbers right here. And we want to use our compact logics to look at them. Then this needs to be a client. And it's going to go look at what information this Micro 820 is serving up. So if you know your numbers and somebody's handed to them, you say, hey, here's what you need to go read. You need to be a Modbus client. If someone's like, hey, I think my thing can communicate over Modbus. If you give me some numbers, I can go look for them, then you need a Modbus server. Now, one other tip that we probably need is the IP address that we set up this Micro 820 at. It is 192.168.114. And then we're going to go to Rockwell Automation Support Center. And I'm just going to type Modbus Compact Logics. And I was surprised because I knew, well, one, we can do RTU, we can do some serial, and then we could have some additional modules to communicate. But right here, we have the Modbus TCP Client AOI for Logix version 2. And when I clicked on it, at the bottom, I saw that it said search for Modbus TCP add-on instruction for control Logix and compact Logix, which I had absolutely not heard of, but all right, I went to the sample code library which is accessible by everyone. Let me do that again. Let's right click it. And we're gonna open in an incognito tab. Now we can just see there's, I'm not logging in. I don't have any super duper power. And I'm just gonna paste exactly what it told me. Modbus DCP add on instruction for control logics and compact logics. We'll search for it. And right there, Modbus DCP add on instruction. And I'll agree. And there, without any logon or anything, I was able to download this amazing add-on instruction. So I'm going to open it up, and it's going to ask me to extract these files. So I'm just going to put them in Modbus TCP. OK. And now, we'll just go to File Explorer, and I'll navigate to that, and we're going to have a zip file here. So I'm going to right-click it, and I'm going to extract all. And we have logic, manual, and visualization. So if we go to manual, we're going to have manuals on both Modbus TCP client, server, and Modbus visualization. So since we've already set up our Micro 820 as a server, we're going to need to use a client. So we're going to need this manual right here for this. And we have a table of contents and all right, implementation is probably where we need to start at. So it says we should create a periodic task for this. So let's go ahead and go into Studio 5000, create a new program. And we're going to be using a 1769 L16ER BB1B. And I'm going to call this Modbus Client TCP. And we are going to have two expansion modules. Now this actually has nothing to do with our configuration, mainly right here on the side of our controller. You can see we have two expansion modules right now. So that's all that has to do with. And then typically when we're programming, we go ahead and we open up our main program and our main routine and we just start packing away. But what they're saying here is that we need to create a periodic task or it's recommended. It says it's recommended to add AOIs into a periodic task with a rate of 10 milliseconds or higher. So, all right, we're going to create a 10 millisecond periodic task. So up here we have task and then we have main task and this is a continuous task. If we'll right click task, we can create another task and I'm going to call this my Modbus 
task. And it'll be a periodic, and okay, there we go. They said 10 milliseconds or slower. I'm just gonna throw it at 10 milliseconds because that's all we're gonna do in this video. And then inside of there, we're gonna need to add a new program. And we'll just call this our Modbus program. And finally, inside of that, we're gonna need to create a routine. So new routine, and we'll call this our Modbus routine. And there we go. We'll open this one up. In fact, I'm going to close this other one. You notice we have main program, main routine. We have Modbus program, Modbus routine. So I'm going to close this one out just so I don't get confused. And then we're going to look here. And it says wrong import and tag name changes. So now we need to do some importing. Okay. So we're going to import the TCP client. And okay, I don't see any need to change the file name. So let's go back to our program. So we're going to right click somewhere in our Modbus routine and we're going to import ROMs. And we want to navigate into that logic folder that we extracted. And we have our Modbus TCP client. So I'm going to bring that in and we'll just click OK. All right, I'm going to delete that extra rung out. And here is our Modbus client, and that just seemed incredibly easy to do. So what's it say to do next? Okay, if we wanted to change our names, we could. But now I'm going to leave it on client one because we're only doing one. But that's that make, looks pretty easy if we wanted to change it. And all right, Modbus TCP client requires the IP module, supports logic sockets. Okay, and we have that with our Compact Logics L16. And the first thing we need to do is configure our slot. And ours is going to stay at zero. It says right there for Compact Logics, we're going to leave it at zero. And then we need to specify a local address of the Ethernet IP module. And okay, if we had our Compact Logics in dual Ethernet IP mode, we would need to specify that. But it says we can leave this one blank. Now let me go over here and make sure we see where we're doing this because it says that's under reference connection. So right here, reference connection, we right click it and we monitor. And that's gonna bring us here and we're gonna open it up. And there is the slot zero, which we're gonna leave for our compact logics. In fact, look at the documentation they have on this. They've done a really good job on it. And then local address, and it said we could leave that. All right, next is gonna be destination address. And so if we look here, it says specify the Ethernet IP address of the Modbus server device. This cannot remain blank. This is going to be the address of our Micro 820 PLC, which we forgot. We can go right here. It's 192.168.114. So I am going to enter an address of 192.168.1.14. So that takes that. All right, and okay, it says we can leave our port at the default, and usually this will be 502, so we're good there. And next it says start the Modbus TCP client by setting tag attached to input enable parameter to one. Okay, so we'll go back here, and we have input enable, and all right, right here it is, client one. I would say since they're telling us to set this at one, I'd say we're supposed to be online now. So I'm going to go ahead and, yeah, let's go ahead and download this program. And if you need any help downloading your program, or if you, we went too fast through creating a new program, or if you're curious about tasks, programs, routines, or any of that, look down in the description. We have lessons on all of that. And okay, it said put a one into the input enable. So... We'll put a one in there, okay. Enable and status connected. I wonder if that means it's already connected to the Micro 820. Well, let's stick with the steps here. So we have enabled it. Oh, and actually there's probably an important warning. If you change any of these parameters during the operation, be sure to reset and then set the AOI input enable parameter tag. But okay, we're looking good. And then we want to expand transaction tags to expose the transaction member tags. And okay, we have a poll interval that we need to set or well, they're emphasizing. All right, right now it's on 1000. I think we're, for what we're doing, that's gonna be fine. 
And all right, they're saying a transaction type of three supported mod bus function guys. Let's just do a search for that. Okay, so three is read holding register. Okay, and then we have read input register. Okay, and then we're gonna write eventually with this one. So, okay, I'm gonna put this at four. So we're gonna read the 3000 area from our micro 820. So I'm gonna set that at four. And then we have a station ID. So station ID. All right, if we're using a peer server, and we're not, we're just using a basic Modbus TCP server. So that can remain at zero. And then they have a beginning address. Okay, and they have that at one. So yeah, we'll put that at one. And we have a count. All right, they have it at 100. We didn't make 100 elements. So we're gonna put our beginning address at one. We're gonna put our count at 10. And then we have a local address. I'm guessing that's an offset. Okay, yeah, so that would be an offset on this. I am not sure if I need an offset or not. So I am going to leave that at zero. And then, okay, is that really it? They're saying enable it now. Well, let's give it a try. So we're gonna set our enable up here to a one. Okay, and all right, transaction stat. All right, here's our status. Okay, zero success, one in progress, and we see it mostly at zero, occasionally bouncing to one, so I think they were good there. Where do we find our data at? Monitoring Modbus TCP client operations. All right, we right click, monitor our Modbus data. So we'll go over here, find the Modbus client one data. Okay. We have zero, one, three, and four. All right, I think this lines up with the read. So we should be looking at 3,000 here. And if we go into our Connected Components Workbench, all right, that would be our Modbus Analog Input. So I'm gonna open up our global variables and we'll go down and find our Modbus Analog Input. And we should be able to put a value. Let me just in number one here, I'm gonna put a value of one, two, three, four, five. And now we'll go over here and we don't have it. All right, I wasn't sure about the offset. So let's guess that the offset I entered was wrong and I'm gonna put a value in number two, one, two, three, four, five. And we'll go over here. Okay, and there you go. Now we have one, two, three, four, five. So I have an issue with my offset. So I'm gonna go back to my instruction, right click the transaction and beginning address zero offset okay so i put one there because that's what they had in the example i think that should have been zero and i think this needs to be one but let's see what we get now do i need to start this again i think i think you can change this on the fly so we'll go back over here we'll monitor our data and okay well we got all right we have two one two three four fives now so so just so we can make sure which one's which, I'm gonna make this one, two, three, four. And I'm gonna change this one just to make sure that things are actually changing. And we'll make that one, oops, can't do one, two, three, four, five, six. So we'll make this one one, two, oh, three. So now we go over here. We have one, two, three, four, and we have one, two, three. But all right, my offset is still wrong. This is going into zero, and this is one over here. So I, I had those offsets backwards over here. So I'm gonna go back to the transactions again and monitor. And this time we will put a one here in the local address. That should shift it up by one. And we'll go back to our instruction and right click monitor our data. Okay, and now, well, now we have one, two, three, four. And a, okay, well I offset it. And just like in all of our other lessons, if nothing else writes to it, it will remain whatever it was. So I think I can just put a zero there and it does stay. And notice if I put like a zero here, 
it's going to go right back to one, two, three, four. Okay, there you go. We're reading data from our Micro 820 to our Compact Logics over Modbus TCP. Now, can we write anything? So if we go back here, we have transactions, and we actually have five of them. So let's go to trans. Actually, let me leave that open because we should be able to do hopefully a lot of copy and paste in here. I'm going to open up transaction number one. And all right, really the transaction type, I believe, is the only thing that we will need to change here. And that will be back over here. All right, I still have it in my search up here. Let's go find our function codes. And right now we have it as a four, so that's how we're reading these 30,000 bit registers. Okay, I want to write to the 40,000s. Right, a single holding register. I think this would just write one of them. I think we want this at 16, right? Multiple holding registers, 16, and that would write through our 40,000 range. So let's put our transaction type at 16. And then station ID will still be zero. All right, our offsets, I think, will be the same. So we want our beginning address to be zero. We want our count, we'll just put it at 10. And then our local address, I believe, still will need that one offset. I could be completely backwards on this. I kind of get confused on these offsets sometimes. And then we should be able to enable this. All right, always exciting. We don't get an error. We'll go back over here and right click our data, monitor. Here's where we were reading from the micro A20. That's our 30,000s. Close that up. We should be able to go to the 40,000s now. We should be able to write to it. So first, let's make sure we know where this is in connected components of our micro A20. Here's our 40,000s. This is where we should be able to write to. This is our Modbus analog output. So let's go over here. We'll close up our inputs and let's open up these outputs. And right now we have all zeros in it. And let's go over here and just so it's something a little different, let's put 54321 in register zero. Actually, I think that should be in register one. If I get my offsets right, zero shouldn't work. It'll need to be one, 54321, enter. Oh, all right, these, these are integers, and our maximum integer value is 32,767. So there you go, let's just throw that in there, 32,767. And now we'll go over to Connecting Components Workbench, and look at there, we got 32,767. And just to make sure the next one works, let's just put in 4321, and we go over here, 4321. 